Hi, this is MXUX. I'm just going to go over this Reddit comment that I thought was uh, pretty interesting from uh, the Lordstown Motors Reddit. Um, this guy, uh, we'll just leave his name out of this. <laughs> uh, he went over the 10Q in detail with a fine tooth comb, and basically, what he's discovered uh, in the 10Q is uh, this clause, which says that if the uh, agreement is not approved by CFUS, uh, which is basically a, tre a Treasury Department program that clears foreign purchases of real estate, uh, as I understand it, although it's in some sort of flux at the moment as well in the United States. Uh, large purchases have to be cleared by this uh, particular uh, unit of the Treasury. And if it's not approved uh, by the U.S. government, Committee on Foreign Investment in the United States, CFIS, the company, which is Lordstown, is obligated to repay the down payments to Foxconn plus accrued interest such and such potential repayment obligation is secured by a first priority security interest in substantially all of Lordstown EV's assets. So, this is pretty draconian. Uh, what they're saying here is, if we go through all this and the government doesn't approve the sale, then it's going to be really uh, bad for Lordstown. <laughs> and it says here, what are the odds of Cephas doesn't approve the purchase agreement? Could this be uh, like a loan shark mob scenario or just normal, normal corporate talk? Uh, and this comment is, it's a way for Lordstown to quietly disappear with investors' money. Of course, this is incorrect. <laughs> Uh, the uh, Lordstown uh, wouldn't be the one uh, disappearing with the money in this scenario. It would be Foxconn. But uh, the question is, uh, obviously this is in there for a reason. And um, what are the odds of it uh, happening? Or uh, what do we think uh, could uh, could influence something like this happening? I'll start by saying right out, I at this point feel that this is not an issue but there's no way to tell the future i'm going to go through some details on this agreement uh in the following clips let's take a look all right so this is mxux this is just a uh, recent uh, you can see november 10 department of the treasury public affairs uh, and this is just an example of this. This is pretty deep state stuff. Definitions of accepted foreign exchange and accepted uh, accepted uh, real estate foreign state. Um, what this is talking about is FIRMA, which is the Foreign Investment Risk Review Modernization Act, which this is tied to. Um, what they do is they evaluate um, purchases of real estate in the United States with regards to uh, national defense, political policies, uh, uh, certain cri criteria. Um, and there are certain real estate uh, transactions by certain foreign persons. So it's a foreign person or for a person from a foreign state. Um, these investors are defined in part by their close relations to accepted foreign states. Now, what this is, an accepted real estate foreign state, the point is this this is kind of an amendment to the law, and what it's going to do is add uh, Australia, Canada, and the United Kingdom, basically give them a get-out-of-jail-free card. In other words, if they want to make major real estate purchases, uh, agents or uh, other parties in these countries, the, uh, they're not going to have to go through this rigorous uh, review. 
that other countries are going to have to do. But uh, again, there are certain parameters that are set here. And see, this is in 2020, CFAS. Now, this is the law they're talking about in the, in the uh, Reddit. CFAS regulation. Okay, so uh, unfortunately, Taiwan is not in uh, the uh, CFAS uh, amendment here, and this isn't law yet anyway. But this just gives you an idea of what this bill is, and what they're trying to do here is uh, put a fence around the country and decide who, what foreign agents of or what foreign agents from what foreign countries are going to be allowed to uh, buy large amounts of real estate and so forth in the country. And uh, this is what Foxconn has brought up. Uh, if there's a determination, okay, under CFAS, okay, that after all is said and done, uh, they're not going to be allowed to buy the uh, Lordstown plant, then they want all their money back. So that's kind of the rub. Um, let's move on to the next section. Okay, so this uh, is from uh, WIS Context. Anyway, this is uh, May 10th, 2019, a bit dated. Uh, Harvard Business School guy wrote this. And this is about the Foxconn purchase of land and I believe an abandoned plant in Wisconsin. And the idea here was they were going to build a um, LCD plant making liquid crystal display screens, I believe. They've since abandoned that. I believe the new context for this plant is part of Foxconn's EV plan, and they plan to base the cloud center for their connected cars at this location. Uh, so it would be a cloud computing servers and so forth that would do the in-car updates and so forth, uh, autonomous driving perhaps, all this computer hardware, software, computer technicians, programmers would be based at this plant. I think that's the goal of this plant now. And uh, it says, where does Wisconsin fit in a tangled web of international business and political relationships? And this is talking about uh, President Trump here uh, and Terry Gao. Now, the thing is, You've got, and, and I'm going to just simplify this, so you, everybody gets a brief idea of what's going on here. This is China, okay? This is Taiwan down here. These are two different countries. Um, as they say, everybody has diplomatic relations with China, nobody has diplomatic relations with Taiwan. Um uh, Wisconsin. Uh, Foxconn is headquartered in Taiwan, not in mainland China. Many people feel this is a mainland China company. It is not. It is a Taiwanese company. And we have down here Foxconn, uh, Hanhai Precision Company, and Wisconsin. The point is, uh, I'm trying to make here is, this deal was approved. Okay, and uh, so this shows a, a past preference for approving uh, Foxconn real estate pur uh, purchases in the United States. Um, and uh, this is just a brief history here of uh, China and Taiwan. Um, after World War II, the uh, people's, uh, there was the revolution and the uh, uh, the Republic uh, of China took over the mainland, um, and the Kumatane, uh, Kumatang government of the Republic lost control, and it retreated to the island of Taiwan and uh, set up its uh, exiled government there. 
and the mainland feels Taiwan is a rebellious pro province and must be reunited, reunited. The Taiwanese generally feel otherwise. So Taiwan is separate from China. Uh, it is not a communist country. It is a democratic country. It's got a capitalist economy. Uh, the United States won't say whether they're going to defend Taiwan or not if China uh, invades. However, there are joint military actions going on. Military hardware is sold to Taiwan. So, uh, in generally on the down low, the United States supports uh, Taiwan's independence. And again, Foxconn is a Taiwanese company, okay? Foxconn, Taiwan, not China. So uh, the point I'm making here is that um, this has been, this, this sort of deal has gone through in the past, and uh, Foxconn is not China. China is not Foxconn. Just want to make that clear. Now, we're just... Um, I want to go over just a bit. I don't want to get in too deep on this. As of 2019, Foxconn is one of the largest employers in China. They build the iPhone there. And uh, now 2017, the investment in Mount Pleasant, Wisconsin was announced. And now, Terry Gao uh, is the former CEO of uh, Foxconn under which this deal was done. And Terry Gao was going to run for, he uh, his plan was to retire and run for the president of Taiwan. Um, the point is, Terry Gao, who was the CEO of uh, Foxconn, is no longer. Uh, the Chinese Communist Party, uh, Global Times, has suggested they're quite fond of Mr. Gao. So Mr. Gao, the former uh, CEO of Foxconn, was pro-unification, uh, reunification. And this is like uh, one country, two systems kind of a thing. And uh, Gao was kind of backing that up. And it's kind of like a Hong Kong thing that was going on over there. I don't want to get political here. I'm, I'm not a political channel. Uh, but, uh, now this, this tilt of, uh, Gao, you know, this may have soured the, uh, U.S. on approving the, uh, the purchase of this land, but, uh, he has stepped down from the CEO of, uh, of, uh, Foxconn. I believe he's still on the board. So anyway, that's a, that's just so a brief history here. And, and again, this deal was done. This deal was approved, okay? Uh, we don't have direct uh, diplomatic relations with Taiwan, but this deal was approved. So I'm just going through a bit of history here to say that Foxconn has bought property in the United States before, and in the past, uh, uh, the CEO that was under that regime was a bit pro-unification, which might have been uh, something uh, that would have touched a nerve at the, the Treasury Department. He has since left. I believe he's still on the on the board or maybe in a consultative nature with the company. Anyway, let's move on to the next section. All right, now just moving forward with this uh, uh, former Foxconn chairman. Now, this is June uh, 20, 2019. Terry Gao resigns as Fox chairman uh, and runs for president of uh, Taiwan. And Terry Gao, Foxconn, uh, uh, he's leaving. It. So he left Foxconn and he did a run for president of uh, Taiwan. He did not win. I, uh, anyway, uh, he founded Foxconn, biggest shareholder, and will remain on the company's board. I think he's still on the board. He might not be. Anyway, the, the point of this is it relates to our topic today is during his run or lead up to his run, um, some Chinese, uh, mainland Chinese, CCP Chinese officials were saying that 
uh, Gao had uh, said Taiwan was part of China. Again, the pro-reunification move. Uh, and that he had asked the President of the United States, this may have been Trump at the time, I'm not sure, uh, to work on improving relationships between mainland China and the United States. So this, uh, and again, I'm not going to get political here, but this um, was disavowed by Gao. But the point is, uh, had he remained CEO, uh, this could have been a pressure point for the uh, evaluation of the buy, because, of course, the United States wants Taiwan uh, to remain independent, and had Gao uh, been, still been CEO and been uh, backing reunification, this is something that the uh, evaluators at Treasury would have looked at with a, with a, with a um, you know, would have been a negative. Anyway, that doesn't exist anymore because Terry Gao has resigned uh, as uh, the CEO of Foxconn. So that's another plus uh, regarding this uh, issue. Now, just moving forward with this, this is pretty recent. And um, Foxconn chooses semiconductor head to succeed Terry Gao as chair. So this is uh, uh, 11, uh, 19, um, So again, this is the former CEO here and founder of the company, and he has stepped down. So his uh, political reunification talks, which he has, I believe, denied, which may have been a negative towards this whole evaluation, are moot now. And now they have picked uh, Louis Young to head the group, semi, uh, the head of the group semiconductor arm, to succeed Terry Gao. So they have new leadership. Uh, I will never come back, Mr. Gao said. And uh, Mr. Lee's background underscores how important semiconductors were for Foxconn's future. Uh, together with artificial intelligence and robots, these are some some of the three areas they're looking into: EV, uh, electric vehicles, artificial intelligence, and uh, robotics. Uh, but in any case, uh, any um, negative event uh, cast that Terry Gow would have placed on this evaluation, if there were even such a thing, has dissipated, and it's no longer an issue. So. Why would it be denied by the Treasury? We don't know. <laughs> Let's move on. Okay, just moving forward. Uh, this is about Hanhai. Hanhai is the Chinese designation of Foxconn. And we're talking about the chairman. This is the new chairman, as mentioned previously, Yung Li. And... He is the Chief Executive Officer and Chairman of Foxconn Technology Group. Uh, so Terry Gao is out of the picture. Uh, I'm sure he's uh, on a consultative basis. He may or may not be on the board still. I think he is still on the board. But in any case, there's a new face uh, to the company. And anything about reunification, I cannot find any quotes from this individual regarding unification, reunification, or any other political issue. He seems to be a pure technocrat, but, uh, you know, again, as mentioned previously, um, Foxconn's emphasis on semiconductor, and he was the head of their semiconductor group. So, the CEO's not an issue. Uh, they approved the last purchase by Foxconn under the old CEO, uh, whose views has ch quite changed or supposedly changed. And what they've done is replaced the CEO. So, so we've got uh, approved last sale, new CEO. So, uh, again, uh, it looks like uh, this should breeze through approval. We don't know that. Let's move on. Moving on here, this is a very good recent article in Commonwealth Magazine. I'm just going to skim over it. But it's an interview with uh, the new CEO of Foxconn on his EV ambitions. And 
I'm just going to try to touch on a few points here. It's a rather lengthy article. There's some things here involving Lordstown that I think everybody would want to love. And anyway, this is uh, his EV ambition. And moving forward, uh, 2019, he took office uh, having like an Apple, you know, when Apple has a project launch day. And they're talking about the um, electric vehicles. And he says electric vehicles represent the most critical battleground for uh, the new CEO. Uh, it introduces 3 plus 3 model for transformation. They're moving from a cell phone company. Basically, what they make now, they make a lot of electronics, but they, their number one profit item is the iPhone. They want to move past that to electric vehicles, robotics, and artificial intelligence. They want to lead this transformation by electric vehicles, and they want, in his plan, is to increase net profits five to ten percent with a thrust into EVs. Uh, this is a primary goal of his, and he sees it as because you know cell phones aren't a growth industry anymore. Sorry, Apple. That's why Apple's getting to the Apple car. Uh, people wondered if Han Hai, who had no experience in automobile manufacturing, was serious. And he is serious. Now, I've, I've failed to uh, do this cookie thing, so there's some blocked areas in this article. But just moving forward to give you a th an idea of the thrust. And there's the uh, CEO again. Uh, Foxconn finds itself in a Wild West situation during which global standards for EVs have not been set. So, you know, everybody has a different platform. Everybody has a different way of manufacturing. Uh, Foxconn seeks not just to make parts and components, but rather command the auto industry of the future. They want to build the platform as the Android operating system is the platform for many, many different cell phone brands. They want to build the chassis and supply line, uh, supply line to produce the android of skateboards and uh, this will cut down costs and uh, as you say linking with the supply wants to be a platform linking with side produce shared chassis and helping different ev makers produce multi-brand chassis music so in other words they want to uh, make all the operating skateboard and have the manufacturers design their own body to go on top of that skateboard and they want to do it all over the world and they want this to be as android is present on all phones most other than apple they want this chassis to, the, to be present on most, e, most evs um, with the exception probably of tesla so tesla would be the apple here um and just noting, they're targeting automakers and governments rather than individual consumers. Uh, and it says here, Foxconn can provide complete car design, key parts, integrated module design and manufacturing, and OEM services. So they want to be a turnkey uh, to all the brands, OEMs that want to produce EVs, and they want to make everything. Uh, Fox got in charge of um, automobile specs. Han Hai knows about the vertical division of labor and supplies and integrating Fox. So, uh, they're looking at a combined strategy here with this uh, multi division corporation to break into the EV and dominate the EV market here. And I'm just going to move through this quick. And this is the uh, uh, MIH program, which is their skateboard, which is open source in the Chinese sense of that word. Um, uh, Movement in Harmony, I believe that stands for. And um, Open Source Alliance, again, a different definition than what, uh, uh, and they, uh, what we think of here in the United States. Smart, smartphone and cars are more complex than smartphones. Uh, now, just to let you know, in addition to Yulon, a Chinese fact company, uh, he's entered into joint ventures with Geely, uh, Fisker, Stellantis, uh, the pair. Okay, so in other words, he's he's building 
alliances or offering to supply services and setting up supply lines and uh, to supply these MIH chassis to all these different manufacturers all over the world, irregardless of company and country. And uh, it just mentions here, Fisker's second EV model, the pair will use Foxconn's chassis platform uh, and both hardware and software solutions uh, from MIH members in preparations for a 2023 launch. So, um, this whole, th Fisker's whole car is going to be based on this, uh, Foxconn, uh, uh, Android EV model, and they're going to be doing everything from the uh, beginning to end on this car, and that is the pair, and that's going to be their first car that's going to use this <clears throat> entire uh, software hardware com uh, combination and um, I don't believe that it, I don't believe that's a pair there but I don't think we have any pictures of the pair for example um, and uh, of course I blocked this out with this thing here but Chuckmaker Lordstown Motors which is where they are going to make the Fisker pair with this move Han Hai is set to acquire local production lines in the US in, and in the future, in addition to producing Lordstown Motors trucks, Fisker's production will likely be at the same plant. So, in other words, they're saying they bought uh, the Lordstown Motors plant. They're going to make the truck first. That's what they're stating here. And Fisker's production will likely be at the same plant, to follow at the same plant. Um, in any case uh adopt shared platforms and they're talking about reducing costs and so forth uh lou is positioning positioning key components motors batteries and semiconductors now it's funny because they have mentioned that they like the manufacturability of the hub motors at lordstown uh, lordstown only has the rights to north america i believe for those motors whether they will incorporate these motors into their MIH platform, I think this is a big question to look look at going forward. I don't know if they will um, or not. Of course, if they did, uh, they would have to acquire international rights for those motors. Certainly, uh, I think we can all look at this as them saying, we want to produce this Lordstown truck first, and that is going to be their first vehicle, and they're going to make sure that that thing is perfect and runs great okay and i they may be testing the evaluating the hub motors speculation on my part because to integrate those in an mih platform would seriously uh simplify the manufacturing project uh process very simple but anyway that's just a thought um anyway this article goes on the final piece of the puzzle is localized production okay Build, operate, and localize. BOL is their theory, and they want to have these plants in the local markets, producing products for the local markets, and uh, using this Android skateboard uh, with an OEM-branded uh, vehicle body on top of it. So that's just an idea. And again, here's another project, Thailand Petroleum. So they are signing contracts all over the world. Uh, to get this going, and he wants to move quickly to do to gain market share. I think certainly from uh, Tesla. But anyway, this is uh, this is his quote. Today's young people have been working on PC computers for the last thirty years. Okay, that's what he's saying. They want to go down the road, a new road, and that is the EV. And I think he's right there. Um, the next generation of car buyers, they see the advantages of EVs, and, uh, you know, it is the future. Um, so, uh, Foxconn is undergoing transformation, and a Taiwanese industry is in the midst of transformation. So, in other words, what he's saying, he's putting a you know flag in the ground and saying, you know, we're going to become an EV manufacturer. We're going to transition past phones to EVs. So anyway, I thought this was an interesting article. You might want to, uh, let me just go back to the masthead here. 
uh, take a look. It's a, it's a pretty good read. It'll, it'll tell you exactly what, uh, and this is Commonwealth Magazine uh, 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 of this year. Uh, and you can take a look at that. Anyway, I thought that was an interesting aside and puts us in perspective with uh, Lordstown. Okay, this is the Treasury Department uh, site uh, going over uh, CFAS, Committee on Foreign Investment in the United States. Now, this is the original act. CFAS is an interagency committee authorized to review certain transactions involving foreign investment in the United States and certain real estate transactions by foreign persons in order to determine the effect of such transactions on national security of the United States. So this is the original act. And that's kind of blah, 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 and interagency. So, but it's basically what it's saying is we're going to, we're going to check out all these uh, people that we think are shady, uh, anything that any purchases that might have anything to do with national defense. We're going to evaluate them. Um, this is the FIRMA, F-I-R-R-M-A, which is the Modernization Act of 2018. Basically, what this says is it gives the president and CFAS broader authority over doing these evaluations and I think the key here is giving the president more input into this process of course we have Joe Biden Joe Biden is uh, aiming for union US union auto manufacturers and auto manufacturing jobs uh, Lordstown is a US manufacturer are they union no were they union yes is Foxconn anti-union they are agnostic on unions. They have worked with unions in the past. I don't think any major corporation is pro-union. Um, will that be a factor? We don't know. Uh, will they? Will Biden want to tamp down the competition uh, with Ford using this? I don't know. I I think uh, with the potential of this plant creating thousands of jobs in this area. And these would be American jobs building vehicles in America for Americans. I would think that this is not going to be an issue. That would be my evaluation presently. However, we don't know anything could happen. And they have, as I said, mentioned earlier, they have writing into this law some exceptions for, you know, countries that get out of get out of jail free cards for certain countries UK Australia and so forth but this is basically uh, kind of deep state stuff kind of murky and kind of well this is that and that and that so uh, anyway this is uh, what we're looking at as far as that reddit question and these are the two things that uh, uh, this is the original act this is the modernization act and they just uh, put the accepted countries in. So, moving on. Now, this is uh, from a law firm. Um, this is from the web. April 2020. Uh, CFIS, what is it and how does it affect on uh, foreign investors? And this is kind of a CFIS for dummies. Uh, what is CFIS? Interagency committee that reviews covered transaction foreign acquisitions and investment in U.S. companies for national security concerns. Okay. CFAS can block or unwind a transaction or require the parties to alter the transaction to mitigate any national security concerns. Uh, this is what that clause uh, mentioned in the Reddit uh, Q10 reading is about. So CFAS can block it. CFAS can unwind the whole deal. CFAS can cause them to change parts of the deal if they feel uh, this threatens national security. And again, with the latest upgrade to that particular law or concept, the president has more input in this process. Um, just moving through the rest of this, uh, you know, the companies that make these purchases are supposed to file and so forth. Um, uh, is there any exception for foreign investors? And those from an accepted state, and we mentioned uh, Australia, United Kingdom, I think Canada is the third one. 
we don't have diplomatic relations with Taiwan. I don't believe they can be accepted accepted uh, without diplomatic relations. So there's no exemption there. Um, what should I learn? And I'm just going to skip over the rest of this. Uh, there are there are going to be partnerships and so forth <clears throat> that are going to be considered as part of this. What should I learn about the target company that might signal if I ha if an investment could trigger a CFIS review? And this again uh, refers to the uh, Reddit post. As early as possible, learn the following information about the U.S. target company, and that would be Lordstown Motors. Is it involved in critical te technology, critical infrastructure, or does it collect or maintain sensitive personal data? Um, I would say not really, not really, not really critical, not really critical infrastructure. I mean, we have uh, many competitors in this field. Uh, does a collector maintain sensitive personal data? They are building a cloud computing center in uh, Wisconsin uh, related to over-air updates. Will they be collecting driving data? I don't know. Could this be a sore spot? Possibly. Um, who can say? I don't know. In any case, uh, uh, this is a Taiwanese company, not a Chinese company. Again, we've gone through that. Uh, so sensitive personal data, perhaps having to do with the uh, data interchange between the vehicles and their cloud computing center. Uh, does the physical location have geographic proximity to U.S. government facility, military base, airport, or restricted airspace or seaport? Uh, there is the Ravenna Arsenal that is not far from this location. That is basically a retired base. Um, I do not believe that is an issue. And then uh, this third thing mentions any government contracts involved well the united uh, lordstown has been talking to the government about the the military vehicle but i don't believe there's anything solid there is there any government funding or investment uh in this uh, company i don't believe foxconn's getting any from their end and certainly lordstown you know they did their spac and i don't even think they got any local rebates on taxes and there hasn't, they haven't received the, the advanced manufacturing loan, uh, which would be part of this, uh, which Foxconn is going to be involved in. So I don't think that's an issue. I, I would say, uh, looking at all of this, uh, you know, the personal data with the uh, on-air updates with the cloud computing center, perhaps collecting driving data may be a sore spot. I can't see any others. Um, I don't ultimately think uh, this is going to be an issue. However, uh, as we it says here, CFIS could block, unwind, or require the parties to alter transaction. Uh, so, uh, with the re reform of this law, President Biden has more input into this process, and that would be the wild card, I think. Um, you know, would he would he block it? I don't think so. Would he uh, want changes? Would he want some implication of uh, there being a, 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 a pathway to unionizing this plant? Possibly. Would uh, Foxconn be agreeable to that? Possibly they would. Um, this was a union plant under General Motors. Uh, I think that this local workforce um, would be uh, amenable to that. And certainly, uh, I think the unions aren't what they used to be as far as uh, battling with employers. I don't think it would be a necessarily a bad thing if Wordstown did institute a, a union workshop there. But anyway, that's my uh, evaluation on all of this. Uh, is it an issue? I can't see an issue here except for possibly that cloud computing center and the over-air updates and the collecting of the driving data, possibly. 
uh, customer data possibly um, for the Lordstown vehicles produced at this plant and the other vehicles using the MIH platform. Maybe. I can't think of any other reason. Again, President Biden's union bias may come into play. Uh, on a scale of 1 to 10, certainly below 5, is this a concern? I would have to put it, you know, it's not a 1. Let's say a 3 on a scale of 10. Um, but you never know what's going to happen. And uh, anyway, that's my take on this whole topic. It is what it is. And... Um, as with everything else, Lordstown is a pre-revenue SPAC, and it's uh, um, awaiting production next year. So this is a high-risk investment. This is one aspect of doing a high-risk investment. Uh, and anyone uh, involved in Lordstown uh, needs to take a good, hard look at their investment and what they're willing to lose. There's, of course, a tremendous upside with this potential investment. There's also a very large uh, catastrophic loss on the downside. I'm not an investment advisor. This is really a business case study. Thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate it. And uh, any links uh, that are interesting, I'll put in the description. Thanks a lot, guys. Hi, this is MXUX. I'm just putting a close on this video. Thanks for watching. A bit complex, this topic. Uh, if anyone has any input, uh, further input on this topic and my analysis, please add it to the comments. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, that little round circle that's going to come up is the subscribe button. Uh, thanks again, guys. Catch you later.